Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 23rd June 2018. I am Sagan Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you want to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the About menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will analyze oil and gold. These two commodities, they tend to impact related stocks. We will analyze them using technical charts. When taking trades, it is better to align them with the market direction. We try to understand the market's direction by studying NASDAQ and NYSE market breadth as well as the technical analysis of the broad market ETFs. Along with aligning trades with the market's direction, we like to align them with the industry strength or weakness. We study the industry strength and weakness using industry scorecard and heat map. We will do this top down analysis today as usual and along the way may go through some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum and look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's now move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis with oil. We are looking at oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this at a glance template because this allows us to decide if there is a low risk entry opportunity at the right edge of the chart in only a few seconds. From the weekly chart, we can see that for past several weeks, US oil was going down. The backdrop candle color was magenta. This week ended up being a sharp reversal week. Price could close above the high of three previous weeks. The weekly candle backdrop color turned cyan and the shape is clearly bullish, a long hollow candle. In the daily chart, oil was moving somewhat sideways for several weeks. There was no directional swing trade opportunity in oil during this period. For the first five days of this week also it moved sideways. On Friday it opened with a big gap up and then continued to move higher closing very near the high of the day. On Friday one might trade US oil as a gap long trade opportunity. Let's look at the real time chart to see if a low risk gap long trade opportunity was indeed there. This is US oil using 5 minute real time chart. On Friday price opened with a big gap up much above Thursday's high. Soon after market opened it formed the early range high and early range low. On this candle, it closed above early range high, thereby giving us a gap long trade opportunity at this price level. Stop would be just below day's low. The stop was never hit. By the time price came to the pause pivot level, the white pivot level, more than risk distance was covered. At that point, Q 
you trader would book at least partial profit and may hold on to the remaining position closing it at the end of the day for day traders and if somebody was swing trading might hold partial position at the end of day trying to let profit run using the real time chart in this manner one could capitalize on the gap up move of us oil and take a low risk and profitable bullish trade the trade could be taken using the etf uso or it could be taken with call options on uso as well from oil we move on to studying gold we are looking at the gold etf gld from the weekly chart we can see that gold is moving down for many weeks now in the middle it tried to move sideways for 3 weeks and then for next 2 weeks it fell again this week it closed below the memory automatically drawn smart trend line support in the weekly chart activity was high it closed below the trend line support however the weekly candle has a lower tail we may keep an eye on gold and see if it can recover above the trend line support if it does so it may give long day trade in the daily chart price is below lower boundary lines that is too oversold for us to try to take any short trade from commodity study we now move to market breadth analysis every week we study market breadth using nasdaq composite index and nyse composite index both using weekly charts as this analysis is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval this is to be used more for longer term investment decisions not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading for past several weeks nasdaq was outperforming nyse that continued this week nasdaq closed inside the last week's range the candle color turned yellow however it is still overbought we know that from the green dot appearing on top of the last candle the bear release signal has not appeared yet last week also we discussed the divergence between the index candles and the new high low that became more severe new high low dropped further price didn't drop or go up closed inside last week's candles range the other two internals advanced decline and up down volume went up up down volume could not close above zero showing that the declining stocks in nasdaq declined with more volume than the stocks that went up advanced decline closed slightly above zero showing more stocks went up than went down what about nyse NYSE was moving sideways for several weeks that continued this week on a closing basis it closed down the candle color turned magenta that is bearish however both NYSE and Nasdaq are supported by support trend lines the NYSE support trend lines are very close to this week's candle until these trend lines are broken the uptrend will continue both for nyse and nasdaq though on a closing basis nyse closed lower the internals for nyse all went up new high low advanced decline as well as up down volume in total five of the internals went up and five of the internals closed in the positive 
therefore in summary we can say that in the longer term weekly periods both the indices are in uptrend nasdaq is much stronger than nyse there is divergence between nasdaq index and new high low the internals for this specific week are bullish therefore whatever be the media chatter about the market being weak due to the tariff wars between different countries the bearishness is certainly not visible on the broad indices let's see if the same conclusion holds from the broad market etf s&p 500 etf spy in the weekly chart the candle color was cyan until last week this week it turned bearish magenta the candle shape ended being an indecisive shape both with upper and lower tails in the daily chart price went to the upper boundary and now it declined little bit spy still has higher high and higher low in the daily chart therefore the uptrend is intact next week if spy goes up gives us a cyan color candle then it may give us a trend following low risk long opportunity we may take that trade with confidence because the risk will be probably very small stop loss will be nearby and also because SPY is being supported by memory trend line. We saw that NYSE is also supported by many memory support line. That gives us more confidence to take a swing long trade if we have the go with flow trade set up next week. Nasdaq ETF QQQ clearly it is much stronger than spy last week it made a new all time high broke above the watermark resistance level however this week it turned down this week's closing price is inside the last week's range the weekly candle color is yellow shape is somewhat indecisive it came down from the week's peak however closed just above the watermark resistance line qqq has displayed the bear release signal we didn't see that in the nasdaq index broad market index in the daily chart qqq displayed a bearish possible reversal signal several days ago there was no bearish headwind short trade setup however looking at the headwind signal any long position holder would place a trailing stop the stop was probably not hit since that bearish headwind candle price effectively moved sideways looking from the right hand side it is inside a narrow range bound by the watermark resistance at the top and memory support at the bottom until it breaks out of this narrow range the direction is not clear and we may not want to take any swing trade in qqq dow jones industrial average etf dia this was weaker than spy and qqq and that continued in the current week dia weekly candle turned bearish both in shape as well as in color in the daily chart it went to upper boundary earlier from there it came down however the low of thursday is still above the previous low therefore it is still having a technical uptrend with higher high and higher low as the traffic light candle color has turned bearish in the daily chart 
and the weekly candle is also bearish it is unlikely that we will have a go with flow trend following long setup in dia soon instead of dia we may have that in spy there is no short or long swing trade opportunity in dia at present russell 2000 etf iwm this was the strongest of the four etfs in recent times it kept on making newer and newer all time highs in the weekly chart this week it went up significantly from last week's close however pulled back on a closing basis it closed almost at the same level as last week this week's candle color turned neutral yellow the candle shape is mixed it has hollow body as well as upper tail in the daily chart iwm was going up strongly with clear uptrend and that uptrend is continuing on friday the candle color turned red bearish however it is in clear uptrend therefore we are not going to take any short trade it is close to the upper boundary therefore there is no low risk long opportunity either if we combine the broad market breadth study with the broad market etf study we see that there is no bearish trade opportunity there is no bearish signal in either the broad indices or the broad etfs so we cannot say that market is bearish there may be some reason for caution but certainly there is no bearish signal what could be the reason for caution one could be the divergence between nasdaq price and the new high low the other could be that though qqq and iwm are going up strongly those are more dominated by smaller cap stocks the larger well known stocks that are part of spy and dow jones industrial average they are not going up so much that is the second reason for concern in this environment one may be cautious and avoid taking long in stocks that are overvalued in terms of fundamentals or overbought in terms of technical chart i had mentioned of this in the last week also and i explicitly mentioned of some stocks that warning was timely as we will see when we study the sector and industry performance let's study that now sector performance of past 4 weeks every week we study the 11 sectors across three review periods red bar represents performance of this week green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and yellow bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar together they give us performance of four weeks any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up any bar coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down this week five of the sectors went up these are utilities real estate energy consumer staples and consumer discretionary and five of the sectors went down telecom materials information technology industrials and financials healthcare closed with break even five sectors went up five sectors went down this shows a balanced picture of the market at sector level energy sector was the weakest sector one week ago in our q edge sector industry scorecard energy's score was weakest from there 
it went up sharply and this week it became the strongest sector. We will see that momentarily from the scorecard. While it was doing that, looking at Q edge, the real time sector industry analyst, you could take profitable long trades in energy stocks that were fundamentally strong. We will see at least one example of that in today's session. Consumer discretionary, it is up for all the three review periods. It had been one of the strongest sectors. However, last week in the market roundup, we had studied the decelerating industries. We saw seven of the most decelerating industries were in consumer discretionary. Looking at that, I had cautioned on consumer discretionary sector. The sector as a whole went up, but you can see that the performance is clearly weakening. Looking at such deceleration, Q traders would book at least partial profit in profitable long position and probably put trailing stop on the remaining position to protect the remaining profit. Information technology. It was one of the best performers. Last week I had mentioned that several stocks in information technology with very poor fundamentals were going up sharply. I had warned on taking long positions in such stocks saying that if the market reverses even a little bit these poor fundamental stocks would drop faster and i had mentioned these two stocks zuo and dbx that warning was timely both of these stocks fell massively this week once again Using Q360 degrees analysis, we could protect our capital and not follow the crowd and buy stocks that were weak fundamentally. Later on, we will look at these two stocks and see how they severely underperformed the market, falling massively. Let's look at Q edge to study these sectors using the scorecard and heat map. This is Q edge. Every time we open it, it analyzes all the sectors and industries across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and 1 day periods. For every period, we can double click on the column header to sort by that period. Q edge assigns a large score to the best performing sector and a small score to the worst performing sector also applies a heat map magenta to the worst performer and sign to the best performer this gives us a scorecard and heat map that instantly tells us which sectors are strong now energy and real estate which ones are weak materials and information technology it also tells us which sectors were strong earlier. Information technology that weakened very fast and now turned out to be the worst performer. On the other hand, energy was the worst performer one week ago that gained score very fast and turned out to be the best performer. One of the two stocks that I cautioned against in last market roundup was dbx dropbox its fundamentals were not good however it was going up sharply this week on monday it tried to go up little bit and from tuesday onwards dropped sharply many retail traders caught onto the bandwagon and try to enter Dropbox at a higher price level without looking at the fundamentals and also not looking at the industry strength or weakness. They are now caught 
at the top like a bull being trapped. It dropped massively. It dropped so much that they may not have the heart to exit the trade now. The same is true for Zuo, ZUO. Let's have a look at that. ZUO using at a glance template. Another case of a stock going up sharply and then reversing equally sharply. The activity pattern of last four days is very bearish for ZUO and it was bearish for DBX as well. Keeping an eye on Q Vital and Q Edge to analyze these stocks fundamentals would help us avoid taking a long trade in these stocks and therefore we would not have to go through the pain of the severe price drop in these two stocks. There are many other stocks that were going up and that will continue to go up which are fundamentally strong. In Q trading way we prefer to take trade long position in those stocks where fundamentally they are strong technically they are at a low risk buy point and whose industries are strong as well. From sector analysis we now move to industry analysis. We are looking at 10 of the best performers of this week. We are looking at their scores over this week and over last two weeks. From the scores we can see that mostly they are holding on to their gains. Oil and gas drilling that is in the energy sector gained score considerably. Other than that all the other nine industries were strong one week ago as well. Food retail belongs to consumer staples sector. Let's have a look at that. We can go to Q edge, place our cursor anywhere on the consumer staples row and click drill down. That will instantly bring all the consumer staples industries in the industry panel. Food retail is indeed an industry in consumer staples sector. Consumer staples was very weak earlier. However, in past few market roundups, I had observed that the sector and several industries inside the sector were starting to go up. We could get an early warning of that from the accelerating industries. Food retail is clearly one of them. It was weak earlier, magenta color, and very nicely gained strength, turning cyan in the current week. We can drill down to the food retail stocks by clicking the drill down button. All the food retail stocks from our scorecard are now brought into the stock panel. Instantly we can see that SVU super value is an optimal valuation stock. We know that from the sign color in the valuation primary column. From the short squeeze column, we can see that it has a potential short squeeze. So here we have one sector that was weak, then started to go up. This specific industry, food retail, was weak and then it started to go up. And SVU in this industry was a stock that was optimally valued and had a short squeeze potential. We could do all this analysis only in few minutes and keep an eye on SVU for a low risk long opportunity on the technical charts. That low risk long opportunity came on 21st May. It gave a trend following long trade setup using our Q unambiguous checklist. Since then SVU has gained by 27%. Let's have a look at the technical chart to see how on 21st May one could identify that trend following go with flow long trade setup. This is SVU using at a glance template. 
this is 21st May that gave us a cyan color candle and all the movement indicators turned bullish green earlier SPU had gone up to the upper boundary then pulled back to value area came to the yellow direction line and went up from there giving us a cyan color candle with higher high and higher low at that time the industry was going up sector was going up the stock was fundamentally optimally valued had short squeeze potential we could take a long at the close of this candle putting stop just below recent low which was also just below the yellow direction line since then SPU has gone up strongly as of this Friday it has gone up by more than 27 percent a swing trader could book partial profit at the upper boundary and as the stocks fundamentals industry strength sector strength all were strong could apply trailing stop and try to let profit run he could continue to hold the remaining position as of this Friday this is yet another example where we could keep an eye on a sector and industry that was weak and started to turn up and could catch the exact point where SPU gave us a first go with slow trend following long trade setup. Oil and gas drilling gained score significantly. UNT unit cop gave us a trend following long trade setup on 18th June that is this Monday UNT is up by 12.4% this week it had optimal valuation when the go with flow trend following long trade setup was signal and recent quarter earnings growth was there positive earnings growth as well as a short squeeze potential let's use QA start with energy sector drill down to its industries further drill down to oil and gas drilling stocks and then look at UNT's fundamentals and technicals to see how one could easily identify this trade using top-down analysis the same could be done using bottom-up analysis as well energy sector was the weakest sector one week ago now it is the strongest sector let's drill down to energy industries we can sort the industries by their performance in this way oil and gas drilling is the second best energy industry of this week let's drill down into its stocks instantly we can see that UNT unit corp has optimal valuation recent quarter earnings growth is positive it went up by 40 percent and it has a short squeeze potential let us look at the technical charts this is unit corp using the hopon template that we use for identifying trend following trend opportunity on this Monday it gave us a cyan color candle by that time it was starting to go up giving higher high and higher low price was also above the yellow direction line and white direction line on Monday it opened just below the yellow direction line and closed sharply higher near the high of the day that gave us a go with flow trend following long trade setup we could enter the trade at the close of Monday put stop just below recent low and by this Friday the upper boundary initial profit target was hit at least partial profit could be booked if you notice how unit corp moved and its industry moved and compare that with US oil ETF USO you will see that the signal in unit corp came before US oil moved we could take this trade confidently 
because unit corps industry was strong the stocks fundamentals were strong and it gave us a very low risk entry opportunity so we were ahead of others who were waiting for us oil to go up on friday those people may be taking a long position in unit corp however we will be booking at least partial profit it is also near a resistance trend line that is another reason that we will certainly book at least partial profit and put a stop on the remaining position in such a way that the entire trade is risk free from now onward because the sector is now strong industry is strong the stock is still optimally valued and the technical charts are strong as well there is no reason to exit full position partial position may be held from the best performing industries we now move to the worst performing industries last week i had warned about consumer discretionary sector based on industry deceleration when we have industries decelerating in a week they often end up being some of the worst performers in subsequent weeks last week several consumer discretionary industries decelerated and this week consumer discretionary sector is most prevalent in the list of worst performing industry four of the worst performers are in consumer discretionary these are home building household appliances auto parts and equipment and motorcycle manufacturer if you remember earlier we had studied motorcycle manufacturers and identified a possible long opportunity in harley davidson that swing trade gave us enough profit it had hit the initial profit target following discipline a q trader would book at least partial profit and use stop in such a way that the whole trade was risk free from that time onward that discipline is useful because this week motorcycle manufacturers turned down however we would have already booked profit and would not be affected by the downturn in auto parts and equipment industry vc gave a trend following long setup on 8th june that was already profitable this was a case similar to harley davidson in motorcycle manufacturers when it had hit initial profit target following discipline we would always book profit now that the industry became one of the worst performers would not erode our profit we would have booked it by now the industry is now one of the worst performers that is one reason we will now be cautious on any remaining position we may hold the technical charts of vc may also have some reasons to be careful about let's look at the worst performing industries in qh look at motorcycle manufacturers auto parts and equipment and also look at the stocks hog harley davidson and vc these exercises will show us how we can use the q systems to enter trade at the optimal point low risk buy points book profit with discipline and hold on to the profit when the sector industry fundamental technicals are strong and exit the trade completely when there is some weakness in qh to get the best or worst performing industries of this week we can sort over five days period the worst performing industries scores are in magenta color auto parts and equipment is one of the worst performers this week let's drill down to the stocks pc is one of the stocks that is overvalued let's look at its technical charts 
this is VC using hop on chart that we use to identify trade opportunity in a trending market. On 8 June, it gave us a cyan color candle. Price was already going up with higher high and higher low. Therefore, it gave us a trend following long opportunity. We could take the trade at the close of the day, put stop just below recent low. And by this week, it had hit the upper boundary. Following discipline, we would book partial profit. The industry is now one of the worst performers. However, that didn't affect our profit booking. We could book profit with discipline. The industry is showing weakness and technically it is showing some weakness because Friday's price closed below this trend line support level. Friday was a very heavy activity day. This shows that for swing traders, booking profit at initial profit target is required so that we are not caught off guard by a decline in the industry or in the specific stock. The same was true for HOG as well, Harley Davidson. This is Harley Davidson. We were tracking it in multiple weekly market roundups. We could take a long trade on this cyan color candle. Then the stock went up, hit the upper boundary and then also hit the white direction line. A Q swing trader would definitely book at least partial profit at those price levels, either at the upper boundary or at the white direction line. Now the industry is one of the worst performers and the technical chart also has some signs of warning. Friday's candle color turned red and on Friday it fell with heavy activity. Once again, by booking profit with discipline, we would continue to take money from the table. We would not be affected by the downturn of the industry and the stock. In the last market roundup, I had mentioned that several very poor fundamental stocks were going up in information technology sector and I had warned against taking long position in them. Following that advice would be very useful system software and application software. Both are in information technology and their scores decline heavily. Both of them came in the list of worst performers this week. In system software, 9 of the overvalued stock. How do we know they are overvalued? Because their valuation score in Q Vital or Q Edge are in magenta color. There are 9 such stocks in Q scorecard in system software industry. They fail massively by an average of 8.9% this week. That is an average drop of the 9 overvalued stocks. That's a huge drop. ZUO that I mentioned explicitly was one of them. Similar massive drop happened in application software. There are 18 overvalued stocks. This week they fell by an average of 5.7%. Again huge drop. This is why Q traders tend to avoid buying overvalued stocks. ZUO and DBX were not the only stocks that were affected by these massive drops. There were many other stocks. SMAR and SPLK are two of them. Let's have a look at QA. Drill down to application software. Drill down to underlying stocks and look at SMAR and SPLK fundamentals as well as technical charts. Application software. This industry was very strong earlier, as was the system software industry. System software industry is the worst performer now. Application software is one of the worst performers. Let's drill down into application software. 
we can sort the stocks by valuation score by double clicking on the valuation primary column double clicking again will bring the worst valuation companies to the top all the poor valuation companies scores are in magenta color there are 18 stocks that are overvalued in this industry application software industry and you can see on average they drop by 5.7 percent massive drops for one week SPLK and SMAR are two of them a familiar pattern isn't it it went up like a rocket gave a very bearish shape candle pulled down little bit tried to go up again broke above the watermark resistance level created a double top and fell down massively if you notice the two stocks we studied earlier dbx and zuo and now smar you can see all of them are recent ipos it seems that somebody or some entity or several of them were engaged in pumping these stocks up and then dumping them we could assess that beforehand looking at these stocks fundamentals there was no reason for these stocks to go up so sharply and probably these are the kinds of stocks that were propelling iwm higher and higher and i had mentioned that was not a healthy sign for the market splk was a strong stock it was going up for many months then again magically it displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal at the very top one week ago last week itself the candle color had turned bearish in the weekly chart magenta so the shape was indecisive this week it dropped heavily the bearish headwind possible reversal signal could catch the top again in the meantime in the daily chart the stock was moving sideways couldn't make a new high on this candle it tried to go up but closed below the watermark resistance level the candle color was still green that is bullish next day it opened with a gap up tried to recover for few days it moved slightly higher gave a magenta color candle on this wednesday and then dropped heavily because there were memory trend lines at least some of them not far from the closing price of this magenta color candle we would not be taking any short trade however looking at the sideways move followed by a magenta candle in the daily chart and the bearish headwind that we saw in the weekly chart we would either exit long position in this stock or at least put trailing stop that trailing stop would be hit and our profit would not erode so much we could apply the trailing stop or we could book profit based on the discussion on information technology stocks that i had in the last market roundup based on the fact that this stock was very overvalued and the technical charts were showing weakness using q360 degrees analysis again helped us protect our profit every week we study the accelerating industries they tend to be the best performing industries in subsequent weeks i didn't have time to drill down into the accelerating and decelerating industries you may do that study one thing we can see instantly from the accelerating industries is that several of them are in energy sector oil and gas drilling integrated oil and gas oil and gas equipment and services and oil and gas storage and transportation energy sector was worst performer and then flipped to be the best performer 
we already saw UNT gave a very profitable swing long trade opportunity. You may keep an eye on these accelerating industries to see if there is other low risk long opportunities that you get in the coming week. Department stores accelerated. I had mentioned in the last market roundup of three stocks that could potentially go up. Those were M, J, W, N and K, S, S. You may keep an eye on them to see if any of them or other department stores stocks are giving low risk buy opportunity. You can see two of the banks accelerated. You may keep an eye on banking stocks as well. These are the decelerating industries. Decelerating industries tend to be worst performers in subsequent week. If you are holding long position in any of these industries, you may consider booking profit or at least applying trailing stock to make sure the profit is not eroded. I will not go further into the accelerating and decelerating industries today. From time to time, I carry out Q360 degrees analysis on live market and share possible trade ideas or interesting analysis in our traders forum as well as the social network pages. We also share this through the mobile app that we have Q360 degree, Q site 360 degree that is available for Android as well as Apple iStore now. This week I shared this possible trade opportunity on Habit, a restaurant stock. Let's have a look at that. This example like the other 360 degree analysis ideas that I share illustrate how we can use Q system on live market to look for low risk buy opportunity. Usually I am not a breakout trader. so. I might stay away from a trade like this, but there are other breakout traders in the market who use Q system and they might use Q dashboard, QH dashboard to identify habit. Habit came up in the list of best performing optimally valued stocks in the dashboard. In QH, we now have a dashboard and habit came up as one of the stocks in that list. It is in restaurants industry and I noticed that Darden restaurants DRI also in restaurants industry was one of the best performers on the same day. DRI went up by 14.7% and Habit restaurants went up by 7.1%. These are massive gains for a day. I looked at Habit using technical charts. This is the Hopon template that we use for sideways market long trade opportunity, for exhausting market long trade opportunity, or for breakout long trade opportunity. For a long time, Habit was not able to break out of this price level. There was a resistance memory trend line at the right edge. On Friday, price sharply closed above that. And on Friday, we had very high activity. That was a breakout candidate. I identified it from the QH dashboard. You could also identify it using the Q sonar technical scan program looking for breakout up opportunity. So you could come across this opportunity both using QH that is top down approach as well as from Q charts that is bottom up approach. I looked up the stocks industry, restaurants industry and it was very strong, cyan color. So the industry was 
very bullish. Let's use QH to check habits fundamental strength. We can also do a PR analysis at the same time. Let's refresh the stocks. Look for habit. Instantly from the color coding we can see that habit is optimally valued. Cyan color in the valuation primary column. We also see that it has a short squeeze potential. You can see over last 5 days it went up by 8.2%. To do a PR analysis, we can put our cursor anywhere on the row and click on the magnifying glass. That brings all the restaurants industries and it highlights the stock habit on which we are doing PR analysis. We can see there are other optimally valued stocks as well. You may look for buy opportunity in those other stocks. Let's look at habit using at a glance template. Now looking at the chart I can see that my post was not on Friday but was on Thursday based on this candle when it closed above the watermark resistance level. As I mentioned I am not a breakout trader so I might not be tempted to take this trade. Another reason I would not be taking the trade was because the declining white direction line was nearby. However, there are other breakout traders and I think as a breakout candidate, we had a valid signal at the end of Thursday. At that time, it broke out of the watermark in the weekly chart as well as in the daily chart it broke out above the daily trend line resistance as well. That has disappeared now because it is broken and Thursday's breakout was with high activity. DRI Dress 10 was another stock that appeared on the dashboard on the same day. Let's have a look at DRI. This is DRI using at a glance template. On Thursday when I shared the breakout candidate trade setup in habit DRI also had a very big gap up day and from there it continued to go up closing near the high of the day that was Thursday on Friday it went up again ended the week with a very bullish shape as well as bullish color candle weekly activity was very high last two daily activities were high as well when I shared the trade idea on habit, why I didn't suggest DRI was because already had a very large gap up day and closed at the high of the day. So if somebody took a long trade at that time, the stop loss would be very wide. If you remember the habit chart, it also broke out However, the stop loss was not that far. That was one reason why I suggested habit and not DRI. This dashboard is a feature of the latest version of QH now. Once you run QH in real time, it analyzes more than 2000 stocks, hundreds of industries, all the 11 economic sectors. You can do top down analysis, bottom up analysis between sector, industry and stock and you can also keep an eye on the dashboard for best performing here and worst performing stocks under different categories. Here we see the simple best performing and worst performing stocks. If you scroll down you will see the best performing and worst performing stocks with volume pressure. Further down you will find the best performing optimally valued stocks and worst performing overvalued stocks. And scrolling down further, you will find the best performing growth stocks and worst performing growth stocks. By keeping an eye on these categories, depending on your personal trading style, you may find trading opportunities 
based on live market moves before it becomes known to others. This is a very useful feature of QA. You may use it in addition to the top down and bottom up approach. Let me summarize the broad market breadth and market ETFs are not showing bearishness. There is some concern about the bullishness because DIA and SPY are not going up. Instead, QQQ and IWM are going up. Also, there is divergence between NASDAQ price and new high low. Still, there is no sign of bearishness because there is no short trade opportunity or short setup in any of the indices or broad ETFs. In this market, it may be better to stay away from overvalued stocks. I had mentioned that in the last market roundup as well and we saw in today's roundup that several industries had many overvalued stocks and they dropped massively. The broad market didn't drop that much but the overvalued stocks in several industries dropped massively. Q traders stayed away from those stocks and didn't have to take a drawdown. Energy sector reversed sharply from being the worst performer to best performer and even before oil went up using 360 degrees analysis you could take profitable swing long trade in unit cop and probably in other energy stocks as well. In this manner in all market conditions using either top down or bottom up approach you can find trading opportunities that are of low risk and high probability. That is all that I wanted to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.